everyone, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 18 of the tutorial series on AWS HTTP API. So guys, in this video, I will take you through how to verify and validate JWT access token via Lambda Authorizer with an API gateway. And then once the JWT access token is verified and validated, we should be able to provide access uh, for the API endpoint that user is trying to access. So generally, HTTP API provides JWT as one of the authorizer types and I have already done a video on the same as you can see on my screen. So here I have this video that is JWT authorizer with Amazon Cognito. Okay, uh, but I have received a few requests to do a video on how to validate the JWT access token via custom Lambda authorizer. So basically that is something that we are going to uh, cover in this video. So here uh, we will be using AWS Cognito as auth service to generate the JWT access token and validate the same via custom Lambda authorizer. However, this implementation is not limited to HTTP API and you can also implement it for the REST API in the same manner. Okay. And apart from that, I would like you to take note that I have already covered different auth supported by HTTP and REST APIs, which you can find on my channel's playlist section. So now uh, we will get started with the creation of the Cognito user pool. Okay, since I mentioned that we will be using AWS Cognito as the auth service, followed by we will create the Lambda function that would be used as the Lambda authorizer. Followed by we will create a new route within the specific API gateway as you can see on my screen followed by some method and then we are going to bind the lambda authorizer with that route and then we are going to fetch the access token and use that access token to basically authorize the request okay so now so now let's get started with the creation of the Cognito user pool so let's search for Cognito and click on that now once you are within Amazon Cognito, click on create user pool from the top right corner. Now as you can see the user interface has been updated but you can also switch back to the old console if you want but we will move on with the uh, updated user interface. Now here by default the Cognito user pool is selected under provider types so we will move on with that and here within Cognito user pool sign in option we will check username followed by under username requirements we will say allow users to sign in with the preferred username okay and then we will say next now here within password policy we will select cognitor defaults within multi-factor authentication for now we will want with the no multi-factor authentication but as per your requirement you can select the option that is of interest and then within user account recovery we will leave everything as it is and then we will click on next now again in step 3 we are not going to modify anything and we will simply click on next now here within email we will select send email with cognito and then click on next now here you need to provide the user pool name i would say access token pool something like this and then within hosted authentication pages we will say that we want to use the cognito hosted ui and within domain we are going to use a cognito domain but you can also use a custom domain if you want now here you need to uh, enter the domain name so i would simply say uh, access auth and it is available okay so your domain would look something like access accessauth.auth.region.amazoncognitor.com okay now here we have the uh, client settings so here within app type we will say public client and here you need to provide the app client name i would say app1 within client secret uh, we are going to select don't generate a client secret followed by the allowed callback url so i will simply say here google.com followed by click on advanced app client settings now here we are going to leave authentication flow as it is and all this configuration as it is and we will move on to the OAuth 2.0 grant types now here i am going to check implicit grant and uncheck the authorization code grant with implicit grant we will get the access token in the url itself but while we select authorization code grant it basically returns the authorization code and then we have to use that authorization code to fetch the access token so to keep it simple and fetch the access token within the URL itself, we will check the implicit grant. But if you want to learn more about uh, the authorization code grant and how to fetch the uh, access token using that code, then you can refer to this video that is JWT authorizer with Amazon Cognito. That is the part 14 of this tutorial series. But for now, we will move on with the implicit grant. Now here within OpenID connect scopes, we will only select OpenID over here. 
now there could be a requirement to create the custom scopes as well right but that is something that you can create after the creation of the user pool okay so now let's click on next and then we will say create user pool now here we have successfully created the access token pool that is the user pool now here as you can see this is the new interface that we are dealing with and there is a users tab and from there we can create the user i will simply say src cde and within invitation message i will say don't send an invitation okay and then i am going to set a temporary password and finally we will say create user so here we have successfully created one user but you can always uh, click on this app integration and click on this app client and analytics and you can say view hosted ui and here you can always click on sign up to create the new user okay but by default i have created one user so that i can use that uh, username and password to sign in within this hosted ui so now uh, let's go back to the access token pool now here we have groups uh, then sign in experience if you want to uh, modify anything like password policy or uh, multi-factor authentication and whatnot and then here we have sign up experience so here you can uh, kind of set few attributes if you want then we have messaging and what we are interested in is app integration okay so here we have the resource server so if you want to create the custom scopes then you have to configure the resource server but at this point of time i'm not going to configure the resource server we are simply going to use the open id scope okay and then here we have app client defaults where you can basically customize the hosted ui then uh, configure the security and then here we have the list of the app clients now here we have created only one app client that is app one so we are going to click on that and here we have all the information that we need you can also click on view hosted ui as i just did and here you would be able to see the oauth grant types as well as the custom scopes or the open id scopes okay so here we have successfully created the cognito user pool and now as the next step we are going to create the lambda function which we are going to use as the lambda authorizer so search for lambda and navigate to lambda management console now once you are within lambda management console click on create function from the top right corner and give the name i would say lambda authorizer and then i will select runtime is python 3.9 and within permission i will say create a new role with basic lambda permission and then click on create function now here we have successfully created the lambda authorizer function now as an next step we need to update this code in order to uh, verify and validate the uh, jwt access token so for that i have already pushed the code on this repository that is aws tutorial code okay and i will paste the link of this in the video description so this is how the code looks like so let me copy this and go back to lambda authorizer and paste it over here I will say save and deploy now here we are using one additional package that does not comes uh, pre-installed within aws uh, lambda runtime okay that is jwt so for that i have created the lambda layer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to attach the lambda layer to this lambda function so scroll down to layers and click on add a layer now here i will select custom layers and from the drop down i will say phi jwt crypto and the version is one and then say add now if you want to use the same package to create the lambda layers then what you can do is you can navigate to this repository that is aws tutorial code and you can look for lambda layer package okay so here it is you can click on that and you should be able to see a zip file that is pi gwt crypto underscore 39.zip you can download this file and then using the zip file you can create the lambda layer package for pi gwt so now moving back to the lambda function so here we have successfully configured the lambda layer package now as a next step i will quickly take you through this code at the very high level so here from line number 10 to line number 13 we are importing the necessary packages that we need to execute this code successfully now from line number 16 to line number 21 we are fetching a few values from the environment variables right so here we are fetching the region and then the user pool id that we have just created so as a next step after going through this code we are going to set this environment variable so that we can fetch the value from there so user pool id is something that we have just created and then we have the url on line number 18 so here we have defined the url that is cognito idp url 
and this is the URL that we are going to use to download JWKS file. Okay, now what is JWKS? So basically, uh, JWKS stands for JSON Web Key Set, and the JSON Web Key Set is a set of keys containing the public keys used to verify any JSON Web Token that is JWT issued by the authorization server. In this case, it's Cognito and it is signed using the rs256 signing algorithm so this is the url to basically download or fetch the jwks file and then on line number 21 we are fetching the app client id that again we have just configured within the uh, user pool okay and on line number 24 we are fetching the jwks file using pyjwt client okay so here we are using pyjwt package that is the python package to deal with the uh, jwt stuff okay so here we will get the jwks file within this jwks underscore client and then we have the uh, error handling in here followed by here we have a custom method that is return response so here we are basically defining a response that we want to return okay so here we are saying is authorized it could be true or false and within context we can pass on additional parameters okay so this is the helper method to basically return a response now on line number 38 we are fetching the access token from the event of headers of authorization so we will have the a token that the user is going to pass within this variable that is on line number 38 that is the token variable now here on line number 41 uh, we are checking the token structure so we are splitting the token into three parts using the uh, dot as a separator now if the length of that token is not equal to three then we are returning a response saying the user is not authorized to invoke or call the particular endpoint okay now if you want to understand the jwt token structure then you can again uh, follow this video on my channel that is jwt structure so here i have did a quick animation which will explain that how the jwt token looks like and how it is formed now coming back to the lambda function now here on line number 49 we are fetching the uh, headers from the token okay so that is something that we will need at later point of time uh, followed by fetching the signing key from the token using the get signing key from jwt method and then on line number 53 we are using the decode method to validate the uh, token right so here we are basically asking it to verify the signature verify the expiration verify the issued ad verify the uh, identity of the token followed by the verify underscore AUD option that I have set as false because while we are dealing with the access token it will not uh, have the AUD parameter that stands for the audience but instead it will have the client underscore ID parameter so audience is something that we are going to verify in later part of the code explicitly so here basically we are validating the token and here we have the exception handling for the uh, different errors or different exception and now moving on to the line number 89 so here as i mentioned here we are explicitly verifying the audience so here we are checking if app client is not equal to the uh, client id that we get in the uh, jwt access token then we are saying uh, the user is not authorized okay so here we will verify the audience and then on line number 97 we are checking the token use parameter right so here we are checking if the token use uh, value is access or not so if you are expecting the access token then you can uh, compare it with the access value if you are expecting the id token then you can check if uh, token use is equal to id token or not okay so here in this case we are expecting the access token so if it is not equal to the access token then again we are returning the false response and finally on line number 105 we are checking the scope so we are validating the scope so here in this case i am checking if open id scope is present in the token or not right but as for your requirement you can also modify this value that what you are looking for is a part of the scope and same goes for the token use check so if you are expecting the id token then you can modify this value as per your requirement okay so this is the basically high level code walkthrough that how we are validating and verifying the jwt access token now as a next step we are going to set few environment variables that is the user pool id and the app client id okay so let's go ahead and configure that so let's navigate to the configuration and scroll down to the environment variables and then click on edit now here we will click on add environment variable so within key i will copy from here so here i will say user pool id and i will paste it over here as a key now the user pool id you will get from the uh, your user pool that we have just created so here within user pool overview you would be able to see user pool id so copy that and paste it over here 
followed by we have to add one more environment variable that is the app client id so i'm going to copy that and paste it over here and app client id you will get from again the access token pool within app integration scroll down to your apps and here you would be able to see the client id so you can copy that and again paste it over here and then we will say save now here we have successfully configured the uh, cognito user pool and the lambda authorizer now as the next step we will go to the http api that is over here and here we will click on routes from the left panel and here i will create a new route so i will select any method and then i would say lamb or something like this so this is the route that we want to call and then i will say create now here we should be able to see the route where it is here it is right so that is uh, lamb auth okay with the any method so now we need to click on this any method and then first we will integrate the lambda function so i'm going to say attach integration and here i will say create and attach an integration and within integration tab i would say lambda function and here i'm going to select this http api lambda function so here within this lambda function uh, we are simply looking that which method user is using okay so if user invokes the api endpoint with the post method then we will return post method invoke and if the user is invoking the api endpoint with the get method then we will return get method invoke okay so it's very simple lambda function so we are going to use that as a part of the backend integration for that specific route that we have created okay so i'm going to select that and then i will leave rest of the option as it is and i will say create now here we have successfully attached the lambda function as a part of the backend integration for this method okay that is any method now let's go back to routes again and uh, click on that any method and then here we are going to attach authorization okay now here we will say create and attach an authorizer now here within authorizer type we have two options so here we will want with the lambda function okay and i will give a name i would say jwt auth and here we need to select the lambda function that is going to perform the authorization or going to perform the validation of the access token so in our case it's lambda authorizer okay so i'm going to select that and preload format version i will say 2.0 and response mode i will say simple and i'm going to disable the authorizer caching now if you want to learn about the simple and the im policy mode then you can again go back to this uh, tutorial series so here i have covered lambda authorizer with simple response mode and the lambda authorizer with iam policy response mode okay so in this case we will move on with the simple response mode and within identity sources we will leave it as it is that is request.header.authorization and finally we will say create and attach so it says authorizer name must be unique so i think i need to modify the name so i will say jwt auth lamp followed by i need to select the lambda authorizer again okay i will disable authorizer caching and then i will say create and attach so here as you can see we have successfully configured the authorization that is the lambda authorizer for the specific route and the specific method okay so if we click on routes you should be able to see that authorization and integration are configured successfully so now i think we are all set to invoke this api endpoint so i'm going to click on stages and i'm going to use the default invocation url or the default stage so i'm going to copy this go to postman paste it over here slash followed by the route that i want to invoke so the route name is lamb auth so let me copy that and i'm going to select get method over here and simply i will say send so here as you can see it returns status code 401 that is unauthorized okay that means we need to pass the jwt access token in order to successfully invoke this api endpoint so now to fetch the access token we will go back to the user pool that is access token pool that we have created as a part of the first step and we are going to click on this app client and then here you would be able to see the button that is view hosted ui so i'm going to click on that now here i'm going to log in using the existing username and password that i have configured while creating the user pool that is srcecde with the respective password but you can also go ahead and click on sign up to create the new user and then i will say sign in now here it will ask 
to set the new password so let me set it and i will enter the email and say send now here as you can see in the url i have this id token and somewhere after that i should be able to see the access token okay so let me say never so maybe let me copy this and paste it in sublime so copy paste and let me search for access token so here as you can see here we have the access token okay so i can copy that so here basically we will get two tokens that is the id token and the access token right since we have selected the scope as the open id so that's the reason we have the id token and the access token so here what we are interested in is the access token so let's copy this access token we'll go back to postman click on headers and within key we will mention authorization and we are going to paste the value over here and then we will say send now here as you can see it returns status code 200 uh, with the success message saying get method invoked now if i were to modify this token so let me add a letter q at the end and say send so as you can see it returns status code 403 forbidden okay since this token is modified now if i undo that modification and say send now as you can see we are successfully able to invoke that api endpoint okay so guys that's all i wanted to cover as a part of this video and this is how you can verify and validate the jwt access token using custom lambda authorizer so guys that's all for now and till that time if you want me to do a tutorial on any use case or service then please leave them below and i will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible and if you have any queries or comments then again please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time